Hey, good morning. It is a beautiful Sunday morning down at the beach. Ah, oh, so blessed. I'm about 3,648 steps in. Good morning to you. Good morning. Hey, listen, how does it feel to be one in eight billion? That's the question that I have for you this morning. What does it feel like to be one in eight billion? Eight billion is a big number. That's a lot of zeros, isn't it? You know, like, I don't know how many zeros that is. Billion, trillion, whatever. Lots of zeros. But did you know that eight billion people will get up this morning? And I'm one of them. You're one of them if you're watching this. And God only made one of you. Think about that for a minute. Let's think about that for a minute. Eight billion people, good morning, Lori. Eight billion people will wake up today. Eight billion people will wake up. And you are one of them. And God only made one of you. Oh, I heard that over the conference I was at on um, Friday morning and uh, from one of the speakers. And it really hit me. And I know it sounds so simplistic in nature. Like, okay, yeah, God only, you know, he created only one of you. But eight bi out of 8 billion people, think about this, out of 8 billion people, he only created one of you. Think of how, think of how valuable, I just woke up this morning and I'm literally like miles from home. My home is way, way down there. I'm gonna share with you. I'm down in like Jack's Beach right now and way, way down. Let's see if I can scroll in on that more. Way, way down there. Is where I live. I think I'm about two and a half, three miles in, maybe something like that. I don't know how many 3,700 steps are, but I woke up this morning just so encouraged to feel so valuable that God would only create one of me. And, and that's what I want you to feel this morning. If you watch this, if you're catching it live now, I want to know out of you, since you're one of the 8 billion, where did you wake up this morning? I want to know where you woke up this morning. Hopefully not on a bar or in your car. <clears throat> I'd love to know where you woke up in this beautiful world. For me, it was Atlantic Beach, Florida. Where did you wake up? Where did God decide to wake you up this morning? I'd love to know. Just drop it down below. Wendy, good morning to you. And uh, I can tell you, I know it sounds like, Mark, there's so many other things I need to be thinking about. I got to get my week set up. I got to get my kids up. I got to do this. I got to do housework. I got to get to church. I got to, you know, I got to walk the dog. I get it. But can you just stand here for a moment with me and just take a deep breath? Think about this and all the beautiful things God creates, like these beautiful clouds, the sky, the sand. And then you think of the sand. And as I was walking, I was thinking about the sand. And let me pick some up here. So you see that you think of Think of all the thoughts, the sand, and, and eight billion. Just think about that for a minute. Think about eight billion. I don't know how many times I'm going to say this to get it through. Eight billion people woke up. Will wake up today. Eight billion, and you're one out of eight billion. And God created. He thought of you so much. He thought you were so valuable enough that He only created one of you. Can you imagine? Think of how amazing our God is to be able to create 8 billion different people on this planet. That's pretty amazing, right? I don't know about you. Maybe you're not a, a, a man or woman of faith, and I can just tell you, just thinking for that for a moment can just, just kind of even make you just be in awe of God. Think of how much he loves you and how much he cares for you, how much he wants good things for you. He doesn't want you to, to suffer. He doesn't want, you're like, well, Mark, why do bad people suffer? I honestly wish I had that answer. I don't honestly know. But I do know this, that God doesn't ever waste a hurt. So maybe you are struggling. Maybe you're suffering. Maybe you're having a hard time in life. And again, I'm, I'm not walking in your shoes. But I can tell you that over the course of my life and the times that have been and felt dark, felt where I was losing hope, of uh, times where I didn't feel like I got through it. I woke up this morning and I said, you know what? All those things that God helped me through, I made it today. Today is Sunday, the, what is it? The 18th of July, 18th of July. And you've made it. You woke up. God woke you up today. And that's a, that's a good thing. You're one out of the 8 billion. And I want that to be an encouragement for you. He doesn't ever waste a hurt. Never. 
He never wastes a hurt. And, and you know what the crazy thing is? And I know a lot of people maybe won't, well, maybe you will say this, but let me just get here with a light. I feel like I'm kind of shading out here. Okay, here's the sun. You know what's amazing about, about the, the challenging times and the, the hard, difficult seasons of life is they really suck. I mean, for a lack of better words, they really are kind of one of the most, most unenjoyable things ever to go through. But, but can I just encourage you? I feel that I've grown closer to God and I've learned the most and I've become probably a big part of who I am because of going through those difficult moments, because I've had those challenging seasons. And let me tell you, and I'm sure you've had some challenges. Maybe you're in the middle of one right now. And uh, I will pray for you. If you want, I will pray for you. Because I know when I was going through my times, my challenging times, I had a lot of good men and women pray for me. And you know what? Prayer works. I believe in it 100%. If you believe prayer works, I want you to drop that down below. After you tell me where you woke up, you're one out of eight billion. You woke up this morning. I want to know if you believe prayer works. Just put that down below. Just put prayer works. Prayer works. And you know what's pretty crazy is it encourages me to want to pray for more people. When I come out and say, you know what, it wasn't great. You know, a lot of times people think when you come into a relationship with God, everything just gets better. Everything just gets easier. I actually have to tell you, it gets kind of worse. Not worse. <laughs> I shouldn't say worse. It gets harder. It gets more challenging and actually gets more difficult. And I don't know why, but I, I know sometimes when, when you lean in on God, God leans in to tell you, hey, you are not meant for this world. Like this is just temporary. This is just, this is just a warm up game. Like, do you agree with me? Hey, if, if you agree with me, I, 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 I just, uh, I'm encouraged by you. Thank you uh, for all those who've prayed for me in the past and those challenging moments, those struggles. And I want you to know out of one in eight billion, I'm very glad you're here. I'm really excited to know that you woke up this morning, that you have another day that you get to live. You can live with God by your side or you can just live by yourself with yourself. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing, but I can tell you when it comes to those challenging, struggling seasons in life, oh, there's nothing better than being able to lean into your heavenly father and just let him grab a hold of you and say, you know what, it's this is a hard season but I'm not gonna waste a hurt. You're gonna get better. You're going to get through this. And I wanna encourage you today from, from all the seasons and all the ups and downs of my life, and there will be more to come. I know things aren't gonna get easier. Things are gonna just re require me to lean on God a little bit more. And uh, man, I tell you what, I came out of being around a bunch of Christian, amazing Christian leaders, Tim Tebow, Willie Robertson, Annie Ann's, like all kinds of crazy people. I can't wait to share with you the stories, but I was so encouraged by them and encouraged to be around other people, other men and women of faith, other leaders, and just to know that, gosh, there is, there is hope. There is hope, even in some of the darkest, most challenging struggles and most um, unenjoyable, uncomfortable seasons of life. Having hope is the way to get through it. Having hope and trust in God is the way to get through it. Not just get through it, but to, to thrive. You see, what I've learned out of the seasons and challenges and struggles in my life, and I have them right now too, is that when I press in and lean in on God, it doesn't necessarily make it, make it better automatically, but I'll tell you what, it helps me get through it. It helps me get up and wake up another day to say, Thank you, Lord. I'm one in eight billion. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for even the challenges, the struggles, even biblically speaking, it says to pray in all things, pray when things aren't going so well, as well as when you're being blessed. And I honestly feel sometimes our biggest challenges and biggest struggles are our biggest blessings because it requires us to lean in and, and trust God for the process and the plan that he has for your life. So it's Sunday. Good morning to you. Listen, I'm so encouraged. Uh, I get goosebumps. Look at this. I'm getting goosebumps. Just look, that's legit goosebumps. Those aren't made up. I get goosebumps of thinking of how many amazing people I get to connect with, how many people God's entrusted me to be around to help improve their health, their lives. And I want you to know that um, maybe nobody will tell you this today, but I'm going to tell you this right now. And maybe I don't know you personally, but I know God loves me and that means I need to love others. So I love you. 
And I hope you have an amazing blessed Sunday. I hope God is, is working on you. He's working on you so that you lean in on him. And I uh, hope and trust that you'll have an amazing blessed day. That's it for now. Take care. God bless.